Hi everyone, my name is David and welcome to my first ever video on this new channel. If you've come from Fate Unbound, then welcome to the new channel. And if you've found this channel in some other way, that's awesome too, thanks for stopping by. Now, the reason I'm so excited about this channel is because our other one, Fate Unbound, has been all about traveling the United States. It's all about traveling as full-time RVers, but in this channel now, we get to travel a different way, and that is through food. Now, most of the recipes that I'm gonna be cooking are gonna be sort of focused for now on like easier meals that are still delicious, hearty, nutritious, and healthy uh, that you can cook in a small kitchen because, you know, we live full time in our small travel trailer, so we have a very, very small kitchen. But I'm also gonna be focusing on different cuisines from all around the world because quite honestly, I haven't traveled enough with my palate and so I'm really excited to share in these new foods with you guys. And as we use our kitchens to travel around the world with our taste, I'm also gonna ask you guys uh, if you have awesome recipes that you know of that you'd like me to try as well. Now something else about living full time in our small travel trailer is that we don't have a dishwasher. And so if we're cooking these like big elaborate meals that have multiple pots, pans, all you know, they make all sorts of dirty dishes, it can be kind of a pain because now we have to wash all of that by hand. So for this first video, I'm gonna stick to two recipes that can be cooked in either a single skillet or a single pot. They're both very quick, very easy, but extremely delicious. The first recipe is one that has been in our repertoire for years now, and it is huevos rancheros. And then the second recipe is a brand new one I've never tried before, and it is garlic parmesan shrimp. Huevos rancheros translates to ranch eggs, which makes sense when you know the history behind the dish. Egg dishes like this were served in Mexico at El Muezo, a second breakfast that was served to ranch hands and farm workers after their early morning chores. But today, it's a popular dish that can be eaten any time of day. Dinner in our case. Ro and I are huge suckers for egg dishes and go through cartons of eggs like you wouldn't believe. On top of that, Mexican dishes are my favorite. Combine eggs in a Mexican dish that's easy to make with very little cleanup, and you've got one of my favorite meals. Now, this recipe is far from true authentic Mexican since it contains cheese and store-bought salsa, but if I'm being honest, Tex-Mex is where it's at. Ah, <sighs> huevos rancheros. Such an easy dish to make. The, the thing that takes the longest with this is just cooking the veggies in the skillet, you know? It, it just takes a while for the onions and the pepper to soften up, but other than that, you know, you just crack a few eggs, throw in the beans, and let it all cook, put it together, and you're done. And you can top this with just about anything you like. You know, I like medium, chunky salsa, but if you like sour cream, guacamole, avocado, toss that on also. And of course, with this being like a Mexican-inspired sort of Tex-Mex dish, your favorite cerveza is what you're gonna wanna pair this with. For me, Corona with lime. All right, let's try this. I love the crunch of the corn tostada. I usually like flour tortillas a lot better than corn, but the corn tostada just goes so well with this. Mm. And I load it on the cheese too, getting that melted shredded cheese on top. Oh, it makes it just so good. Another great thing about this dish is that it's so inexpensive to make. You're using black beans as the protein and eggs, which are both extremely inexpensive. Like a can of black beans is less than 50 cents. And then eggs are relatively inexpensive too. We go through a ton of eggs on the road because they keep forever in our fridge. And it's another great way to save money, but still be able to eat healthy.
This recipe was actually given to us by a couple of friends that we met while on the road. Um, so shout out to Sarah and Michael if you guys are watching. Thanks again for this awesome, delicious, easy and inexpensive recipe. You know, we ran into those guys at uh, Craters of the Moon National Monument in Idaho. You know, we were like, Ro and I were just boondocking out on BLM land and just here come their travel trailer, just, you know, driving by, towing it with their truck. And they parked in the campsite not too far away from us. And they sent us a message on Facebook because they recognized our travel trailer and they're like, hey, is that you guys? And you know, we just uh, hit it off with them. We went over and they cooked this for us and we made a dish too. I completely forget, I think it was spaghetti or something. I don't know. But yeah, thanks again, you guys. We've been eating this ever since. Definitely a member of the Clean Plate Club. Pasta dishes are Rose favorite. Couple that with copious amounts of garlic and I'll be making the perfect pasta meal for my wife. The skillet I'm cooking this in isn't big enough for these noodles, but I refuse to break them and risk offending any pasta perfectionists out there. If you wait long enough, they'll soften up and fall into the sauce. The original recipe doesn't call for any shrimp, but we like protein in our dinners, so we chose shrimp. The only other one pot pasta dish we have is a real simple spaghetti with red pasta sauce. Not that exciting. So we've got high hopes for this recipe, and I gotta admit, it looks real party. All right, I am really excited to try this dish because we have for a while now had a crab fettuccine recipe, uh, but it takes like three pots and uh, it takes a lot longer to cook than this meal, which is single skillet and only takes about 30 minutes to prepare and cook. So I'm really hoping this is at least half as good as the crab fettuccine recipe that we have right now. And I'm pairing this dish with a California Chardonnay. Um, not because I knew that it would pair well, but because the internet told me. <laughs> and what you're seeing out this back window of ours is the Cascade Mountain Range. We're currently camping in the Cascade Mountains in Washington State, and we love it here. It is so beautiful. The Cascade Mountains are so jagged, and we can see them right from our mountaintop campsite. It is just so beautiful here. The pine trees just give the entire air this very thick piney smell that just smells so fresh. And since we're camping at the literal top of a mountain, we are alone up here. There aren't any other campers near us and it is just perfect. And for this meal, you can see Alice, our other cat, is hanging out with us. Butters was in the first uh, recipe when we made huevos rancheros, but now Alice wanted to chill out with us up on this bed. They both love this cat bed up on our desk so much because, you know, we've got the two windows that, you know, beat sundown on them and they just really love this spot. All right, let's give this a try. Oh yeah, that is really good. Um, I would say that the crab fettuccine recipe we have is a 10 out of 10. So if this could have been like a six out of 10, then I would have been happy, but this is way better than that. I'd give it a nine out of 10. <laughs> could be spicy, that'd be nice. It could be a little spicy. We put, um, cayenne pepper in that other crab fettuccine recipe to give it like a nice kick. And I like it to be pretty spicy. I think the shrimp addition really does help this recipe out. I didn't really know how much shrimp to use. So I just used about a pound uh, for two to four servings. And the recipe says that this serves two to four, but I would say that realistically, it makes about three, um, uh, servings, like row and I size, like, you know, this kind of size serving. But if you, you know, if you weren't that hungry, then I guess you could pare these down a little bit and you could serve four people. Also, I really like thick, creamy sauces. And um, 
making this the way that uh, the recipe called out, in my opinion, made a sauce that was a little too runny, a little too watery. And so if I were to make this again, what I would do is instead of a quarter cup of Parmesan cheese, I would probably add a half cup and see if that thickened the sauce up in, you know, in a way that I liked. All in all though, I would say, you know, taking the flavor into consideration, the fact that it's single skillet and the ease of making this, I think I would give this uh, a seven out of 10, mostly because of the fact that cleanup is gonna be really easy. It is, in my opinion, lacking in flavor a little bit, but you know, as soon as I saw the ingredients, I kind of thought that it would be lacking in flavor slightly, uh, just because it's so easy. There's not a lot of ingredients to really give it uh, like a complex flavor, but you know, that's not really what this video was about. It was about finding, you know, good, fast single skillet meals. And I think this recipe really accomplished that. Ro was just back there talking to me about how she thinks that this recipe could use more garlic. And which is funny because I specifically selected this dish <laughs> because <laughs> because it, uh, had, it used, in my opinion, quite a bit of garlic. Um, and so I asked her if you know, she would want some, or how the garlic flavor felt to her. And she was like, it could definitely use some more garlic. <laughs> If you're a real true garlic lover, then yeah, add some more in here because I feel like with this amount of garlic, it's just kind of garlic flavored, not enough to overpower the rest of the flavors, which is good for me. But if you want that garlic flavor, then go nuts. Another member of the Clean Plate Club. This is really good, super easy to make, seven out of 10. And again, if I were to make this dish again, which I definitely am, this is going into the repertoire. So easy to make. Single skillet, can't beat that, especially when you have limited water as a full-time RVer like we are, then, you know, having as little dishes as possible is really important. If I were to make this again, I would add in some cayenne pepper for that little bit of kick that I really like my seafood pastas to have. And I would double the Parmesan cheese added to it to hopefully thicken up that uh, cream sauce a bit more. But that was a really good dish. I mean, both both of the dishes I made in this video were really good, very easy to make, and are going to be added to the repertoire. I really hope that you guys like this video too, and please give these recipes a try. If you like Mexican foods, um, if you like pastas, then yeah, give these a try. They were both super easy to make, and cleanup is a breeze. If uh, you guys have any, you know, ingredients that you think should be added to either of these dishes to improve them, then please let me know in the comments below. Also, uh, both of these recipes will be down in the video description for you. So you don't have to go hunting around for them yourselves if you wanna make them. But that's all for this video. Thanks for hanging out with me and I'll see you at the next one. Bye.